really impressed with the way IMD has started with the, the kind of culture building that is happening. We started the Sarasuti Puja. There was a Mandir also in between. And director's commitment towards Indian culture also was really amazing. So I really salute you all to be part of this such a good culture. Okay, because I just saw all of you here, today is your first day. Let me just start with my introduction and then I want to start with something very cultural with all of you. So I'm Anurag Gulati. I've been working with Accenture for about 15 years and then I've got experience, let's say, working with Wipro, Genpack and also in shoe industry for about 20, 25 years. I know a few years back, like 25 years back, I was also a student like you, sitting in front of my college deans and my college professors, trying to understand what is going to happen with me in future once I complete my masters, once I complete my studies. And I can understand what will be there in your mind. So the other thing that I would like to cover with you is that what is industry looking for? There is a saying which says begin with an end in mind. When you begin with an end in mind, you know where the goal is. You know where to reach. So it's extremely important for you, all of you to understand what is industry looking for. So we try to cover a little bit about industry. And when I say industry, I'll also explain which industry I'm talking about. Now something that I said that I will start on a cultural note. There is a shloka that I always remember and something which is very much applicable to all of you. There's a shloka which says, na chora haryam, na rajya haryam, na bhatri bhajyam, na bharakari, vyaye krite vardha deva nityam, vidya dhanam, sarvadhanam pratanam. What you're going to get today, you're actually embarking on a journey. It's working and it's really well. Thank you very much. So, you're actually embarking on a journey where you are going to get this dhan, Vidya Dhanam, which is Sar Dhanam Pratana. So, do not underestimate these next three years that you are going to spend here. Every day is going to be a learning experience, every hour is going to be a learning experience. It is up to you how much you grab. You can spend your days by enjoying with the friends, you can enjoy your days partying, just passing the tests and then coming back and then seeing what will happen when the placement happens. Or you can keep building and speak for yourself when you sit in front of an interviewer. The person says, this is the person that I need to hire because this person has invested his three years and really gathered what the professors were teaching. So that is my motivation to you. And I hope that this is something that you are all here for. Let me first start with a bit of introduction about what industry I'm talking about. So I'm talking about IT enabled services. What do you mean by IT-enabled services? In about 2000, year 2000, some of the Western companies, countries, they actually figured out that there is a way to outsource some operations. And when I say operations, what kind of operations? They are financial operations, they are contact center work, etc. to India. That was the period of gold rush. A lot of companies from Europe, from US, started outsourcing their work. To India and it all happened because there was, it was IT enabled. The IT made it possible to work away from the country and they started working and that's where the culture of contact center, BPO, call center came in. Let's start from that journey. That was 2000. In about 2000 it was done as an experiment. The experiment was really successful thanks to the belief system, the middle class education system where we had enormous number of people who could speak English who could work on computer, who could know how to understand data, how to understand business. And that was the gold rush where the IT enabled services started. In about 2003-2004 period, the second generation was there. And the second generation of that industry was saying that it is not just that we bring your process and just give you the labor arbitrage. Do you understand what is labor arbitrage? Labor arbitrage is that if somebody charges $100 in US, in India I can get the same work done at $10. That's labor arbitrage. But what we said is that it is not just labor arbitrage. We will also improve your processes. And how will we improve your processes? By applying concepts like Lean, like Six Sigma, and we'll improve the processes. 
So this is something that they started valuing more and more. Now keep writing these words and noting these words. Why these are going to be important for all of you. Then came the third generation. The third generation said that it is not just being Six Sigma process improvement. Everybody does that. How can we be different? And then we said the amount of data that we get, we will do some data analytics and we will give you value out of the data. For example, I will tell the, the client that it is not just, uh, you know, let's say for example, you are doing some accounts payment kind of work. You are actually looking at the data and saying you have paid so much money extra to one vendor, you can derive that money back by doing data analytics. So the third thing was data analytics. In about 2013-14, Everybody started doing that. You see, what happens is that anything that becomes uh, a lead for somebody becomes a norm for everybody else. Everybody starts copying. A company does analytics, everybody does analytics. A company does Lean Six Sigma, everybody does Lean Six Sigma. Then what happened? Then the next generation came. The next generation said that, next generation of companies I am saying, they said that we will not only analytics, we will not only improve the process, but we will also evolve your process by applying technology. And that's where automation came in. So everybody started thinking of automation, process improvements and so on. Now in this entire journey, what are the keywords coming to your mind? As a BBA student today, when you will, after three years, enter a company, what is it that they are expecting from you? Imagine they are expecting you to understand what a business process looks like. They are expecting you to understand if you have to automate a process, can you write the process? They are trying to understand whether you can analyze some data and you can make sense of some data. So what are the keywords coming out? Automation, process, operations. Automation basically, basically means that when you are looking at automation, you should know about technology and we are slowly going towards technology. I am very happy to know that the new generation, especially the millennials who come in, they are drawn and brought up in front of laptops, they have, they have seen their mobiles, the mobiles are like computers. So for you it is not difficult to understand. But do not underestimate this, this thing and try to use this in a positive way. So the first thing that you should do when you go in a company is that you should be able to understand the process. And what is the basic understanding of a process? Who is the supplier? What is my input? What is the operation? What is the output that I give? And ultimately who is my customer. So things like understanding who is the customer, what do I do, what value addition happens, those are the things that is the basic thing that you should understand in the college days. I hope your professors, your teachers will teach you and ensure that you understand that. It's not just theory, you have to understand that. Then you should have the capability of writing down a process in a very logical fashion. Something that you can understand and something that a computer can also understand. Those are the other two things. And then we can go towards automation and all that. But before that, this is all that we need to basically do. So this was about what the industry is looking for. Now let's talk about specializations. Each, of, each one of you might be thinking, what kind of specializations does industry look for, especially the IT-enabled services. Now what happens is that when a company tries to outsource the work, remember in 2000, there was a word called call center. Call center. That was actually contact center. Now all that work has gone away. IVR has taken away. IVR, you understand? The interactive voice recording systems that we have. That has taken all the work. And India is not known for contact center work anymore. We understand that our students here have studied maths. They have studied commerce. They have studied supply chain. So we can use this group for a different type of work. And what the industry is now looking for is a type of KPU type of work, knowledge process outsourcing. And that's the other part that you should think of in terms of specialization. What kind of process comes in? The process that comes in is could be finance and accounting process. What is finance and accounting? A company is doing some operations. They pay their bills to their vendors. They think that somebody else can pay those bills. I have my core competence in doing let's say innovation, I will innovate. Why would I do my accounts payable? And that is the kind of work that comes to us where we start working as finance and accounting process. We call this as P2P, process to pay, R2R and all this. What is the other type of specialization? Supply chain management. 
the companies want to see how can they optimize their supply chain. That is another work that happens. What is something else that comes in? KYC, Sir. know your customer. The banks want to know what their customers are doing. So they will actually outsource their KYC type of work to us. Now you can start thinking. The specialization that you will do, somebody will do in finance, somebody will do in marketing, somebody will do in supply chain, somebody might do in analytics. This is where this actually comes in. And last but not least, the most most important thing, the capability that you should all develop is analytics, analytics, analytics. And when I talk about analytics, it basically means understanding the data, making sense of the data, and then being able to visualize the data, put it into a visual form so that others can also understand. So I think in nutshell, as BBA students, and I will actually leave on uh, Dr. Yogesh to actually talk about more on uh, the journalism students, but when it comes to the BBA part, this is something that I would say is where you are starting with. If you have to keep an end in mind, keep this end in mind. The keywords that I gave you is Lean, Six Sigma, Analytics, Process Improvement, Automation. These are the things that you will grapple with in the next three years. Whichever class happens, start thinking on this one. What is the application in the industry? Because what we are looking for are people who can apply their knowledge. Right? I don't want people coming to me who cannot apply what they had studied in their college days. If you are able to apply it, if you are able to understand, if you are not able to understand still, the first uh, internship that you will do, that will give you an opportunity to understand what happens. When you go for the first internship, most of the people basically say, when I went for internship, did I get a pre-placement offer or not? PPO, right? And how do you get, so when somebody comes for internship, what are we looking at? We are looking at whether the person is logical in thinking, whether the person can understand the process and write it down. How is the communication of the person? Communication doesn't mean your English. Communication nowadays means also whether you are able to understand that data and explain what the graph is saying, what the data is saying. Or can you put the data in the form of a graph? That is also communication. So spend time in nursing those skills. Basic things like Excel, PPT, these are the basics. There's something that you should spend and next three years you will have enough time to learn these things. This is the basic thing that you will do. And last but not least, when we hire somebody, when somebody is being called on, what are the, the, the features that we look at or what is the qualities that we look at? Something that I started with, right? Something that we all started with, integrity. Whether the person is full of integrity or not, integrity and excellence. Whether the person is training themselves or not, Nobody is going to tell you do this course and do that course and do that small training and so on. It is up to you. Are you becoming best? Are you yourself investing your time in learning free programs or paid programs and nurturing yourself? That is what it is. Respect for individual. Do you respect each other in the organization? When I get people in, we want people to respect each other. Do not consider somebody as inferior to anyone or because of any race, color, religion or anything. That's also important. 